Welcome to part one of the Ocarina of Time Zelda Game Club. The Zelda Game Club is where we play through Zelda games together as a community, and today we're going to go through the first section of the game, including inside the Great Deku Tree, we got the Princess of Destiny, and also where we collect loads and loads of things at the beginning of the game. This one is a community-led feature, so I asked you, the Triforce Times community, to contribute and throughout the video today, I'm going to go through your comments, plus also interesting items from the development history of Ocarina of Time. So this one is a community-led feature, and I asked you, the Triforce Times community, to contribute. And throughout the video today, I'm going to go through your comments, plus my thoughts as well. Well, if you want to get involved in the Zelda Game Club for Ocarina of Time, it is not too late. So for part two, we're going to be playing up to the start of the Forest Temple, so get your comments on this video by Sunday the 15th of October to have your comments included in the Zelda Game Club for Ocarina of Time. Without further delay, let's dive into this amazing game. So first of all, we meet our young hero Link, asleep as he is at the start of many Zelda adventures. The Great Deku Tree introduces Link and the Kokori and explains Link doesn't have a fairy. Well, Link then has a nightmare when he sees Ganondorf riding on horseback and the Great Deku Tree then sends out Navi, the fairy, to assist Link on his adventure. Navi flies through the forest, finds Link and introduces herself. So we've got our first community comment here from Fishnewt1331. I've played a lot of the game versions before, the N64 original, 3DS remake and now I'm playing on the emulator Nintendo released on the Switch, so the control scheme brought a shock to me as I forgot how much simpler the game is with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom being ingrained in my habits, thus I found Link to move both fluidly and stiffly at the very same time. Running around and walking are pretty snappy, which makes it easier to fall off ledges or when I'm tight roping, and even mere small bridges like the one in Kokori Forest. But the stiffness is in the combat which I'm used to Link reacting quicker, and also at more directions than what Ocarina of Time does. It's not terrible once I got back into the groove, but that is a fair warning for the era of the wild players who expect an older game to play like every Zelda game. Well, thank you, Fishnoot. Really appreciate your comments there and the controls. And the controls are certainly a little bit awkward on the Nintendo Switch, unless, of course, you've got the ultra-rare N64 controller. Well, I am playing a via Nintendo Switch Online with the Pro Controller, and the controls, to be honest, could be a whole lot better, although I reckon it is still playable. Well, next up, we've got a community comment from Captain Bergeson, and thank you, Captain, appreciate your comment. And Captain says, just as you suggested in the video, I'm playing on Switch with Nintendo Switch Online. The controls are pretty janky, though, but thankfully, I've got the Switch N64 controller which fixes that mostly. Now, I played the game a lot, you know, pretty much annually since it came out, so I'm very familiar with it. And usually, I dusted off my N64 for each playthrough. Still, I went with the Switch for convenience this time. And I gotta say, though, the stick sensitivity is not quite tuned right, even with the N64 controller, which makes aiming a little bit tricky at times. Well, thank you, Captain Bergson. Really appreciate your comment. It's good to see you've got the N64 controller on Nintendo Switch. I have to say, playing with the Pro Controller does leave a little bit to be desired. I nearly busted out my old N64, but to be honest, it's covered in so much dust these days, I'm really not sure it would work. Okay, let's get back to the game. So Navi then explains to Link he has to go and see the Great Deku Tree, but Mido is blocking the way. He says you need a sword and shield, which lays out your first task. And through a little bit of exploration, we find a hole to crawl through. And once we've navigated the rolling boulders, we find that Kokori sword. Then it is a matter of gathering 40 rupees to buy the shield from the local shop. The funny thing here is you can go into Mido's house, open up his chest and steal his rupees. Now teach him for blocking your path. So we got another community comment from Fishnew again. And Fish says, Navi was oddly sassy upon meeting Link, and that's something that doesn't really happen after they start their journey. It's a bit of a pity, but Navi does get the benefit of the doubt, though being the first companion. She used to get a lot of grief in the past, but I think people have started to soften in perspective of her. 
She does her job really well in most cases, only being annoying when I come across certain points and also backtracking, which I remedy by focusing on the paths that I've not traversed. It reminded me of a main objective hint Navi will repeat often throughout the playthrough, depending on where you are. It's something unavoidable, but a lot more tolerable. If I had to guess, maybe the fact that Navi is so loud to get the player's attention might have peeved off some players in the past, but her reliability is invaluable for players who did not memorize the layout of Ocarina of Time and the main story. So I do have to agree with you there, in my memory, Navi was pretty annoying, but going back to Ocarina of Time, after all this time, she isn't really that bad. To be honest, it's the owl that really annoys me with his explanations and asking you all the time if you want to hear that again. No, Mr. Owl, I do not want to hear that again. Thank you very much. Okay, back to the game. So once you've got the sword and the shield, make your way back to Mido, and after a little bit of complaining, he'll let you past to speak to the Great Deku Tree. He explains the nightmares Link have been having are related to the evil that has arrived in Hyrule. The Great Deku Tree himself has been cursed, and you have to go inside the Deku Tree to break the curse. Okay, next comment from Fish Newt. So, the Great Deku Tree has become so much more of an enigma with the retrospective of the era of the world's Korok living conditions. For so long, from childhood to adulthood, it did not occur to me to question the existence of structures inside the Deku Tree. Things like turning a spike pole that threatens Link when he rides a platform across the water, or the main area having a platform that extends towards the middle above the giant web. You know, were they used by the Kokori in the past? The existence of all these spider webs seem to imply that no one has been inside the Deku Tree for quite a long time, but the Kokori are functionally immortal in the sense of never aging. It's absolutely bizarre. And that is an interesting comment there. I guess I'd forgotten about the Great Deku Tree passing away in this game. I just remembered that the Great Deku Tree from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and the more recent games, but the fact there's loads of structures built inside the Great Deku Tree. But then again, I guess we got a little bit of that in Tears of the Kingdom, when you have to dive down into the depths and fight the Gloom Hands and also Ganon's Shadow as well. We've got another community comment from Captain Bergerson, and Captain says, It's kind of incredible how great the tutorial this game has. The Great Deku Tree is an incredible starter dungeon. It teaches you so much about the game, and it achieves it all without bore and tedium that some later Zelda games would fall victim to. Absolutely right there, Captain. So many things in this dungeon, so many items that you collect as well, new enemy types you're introduced to, and also the combat as well. So it really, really is a great tutorial. And that moment where you jump off the platform from high above into that spider web and break it, I think that is one of the magical moments in the tutorial. Well, talking about the tutorial, next up we're going to go inside the Deku Tree. So this one is our first dungeon of sorts. And our first task is to get the Fairy Slingshot. We encounter some new enemies here like Deku Babas and Spiders. When you kill the Deku Babas, they drop Deku Nuts. You can throw them. But after some exploration, you find a room with some platforms. You can open up the chest to find the Slingshot. And this is going to be really helpful to fire Deku Nuts at enemies. With the other enemies, we can also practice with our Sword and Shield and the process of Zed targeting. So we can shoot the ladder in the room. It falls down, we can escape the room back into the main area of the Great Deku Tree. The objective here is to climb up to the top of inside the Deku Tree, jump off and break the spider's web in the middle of the floor. Only by jumping from the great height will be enough to break through. And as you explore and make your way through the rest of the dungeon, you've got spider webs. We can burn them by lighting the Deku sticks and torching the flames. And that is another really interesting mechanic that Captain Bergson mentioned before. Really, really great tutorial. So the interaction with the environment is really, really interesting. The fact that you can pick up a Deku stick, put it into the torches, and then light the spider's webs, that was really, really advanced for an N64 game all the way back then. Well, the majority of this dungeon is pretty straightforward until we meet three Deku scrubs. On our way to them, we get another to tell us the secret code, and that is 231. That translates to the audio, which you have to defeat them, do that, and then it is time for the boss, and that is Queen Goma. So to defeat Queen Goma, you have to knock her off the ceiling with a slingshot, and once she is on the ground, smack her in the eye with your sword. And once you've done this a few times, you can exit the dungeon. We've got another comment here from Fishnoot1331, and Fishnoot says, Goma gives me the X still to this day. 
I'm not a fan of her birthing a little devil spawn like pawns. Uh, go, I made quick work of her before she can have the chance. Goma is a good tutorial boss, needing Link to take account of the items that he has to defeat her. Absolutely right there, Fishnoot. Really agree with you. It's a, it's a really good tutorial, and Goma is a really good tutorial boss, because the bosses do get tough later on in this game. As you mentioned, it was a good combination of your sword, shield, and also your weapons as well, and of course, the dungeon item. Well, now that is complete, we have a chat with the great Deku Tree. He tells Link that an evil man came from the desert and commanded him to give one of the three spiritual stones. And when all the stones are gathered, a doorway opens to the sacred realm and also to the location of the Triforce. This is a huge power left behind by the three goddesses who created Hyrule. And once the Deku Tree is finished, you get the Kokori Emerald and the Deku Tree asks you to find the Princess of Destiny in Hyrule Castle. Okay, with our first job done, it's time to go back out through the forest. However, Mido is there and accuses you of killing the Great Deku Tree. Mido then leaves and you bump into Saria, who then says a warm, heartfelt goodbye. And as a leaving present, she gives you the Fairy Ocarina. So we then go out onto Hyrule Field and we're introduced to the day and the night mechanic. And at night, the stale children come out and try to attack you. And this brings me on to my next comment from Fish Newt. And Fish Newt says, The stale children are a mystery that others have already theorised about. Yeah, it makes me wonder what they, Red Dead's stale Foss, would have been like in the era of the wild after seeing how Nintendo changed the Gibdo. We're absolutely right there, Fish Newt. We'd like to see those enemies brought back. Although the Redeads really, really creep me out. And that scream is absolutely terrifying. But... We'll get to that in a little bit. So once we leave the forest, we see Hyrule Castle, but the camera pans over to the castle, hinting where we need to go. We bump into Kepora Gebora, and that is the owl, who says the same thing, so off to Hyrule Castle we go. So you have to try and get there before the night time, otherwise the bridge will raise and you will get locked out until morning. But get into the castle and then go to the Castle Town Market, You've got a bunch of things you can do in the Castle Town Market, including finding the Gold Skull Tullers, or also playing the Shooting Gallery. And if you get a perfect score in the gallery, you get the Deku Seed Bullet Bag, and that allows you to carry up to 40. So I've got another community comment here from Captain Bergson. Captain says, it's also incredibly atmospheric, which is always a treat. You know, I really like this approach overall. Most other 3D Zelda titles gives you a tutorial, and then sends you into your first dungeon. But this game rolls both of those concepts into one, and I think the game is a lot better for it. You know, it's far from a complex dungeon, but it's perfect for beginners and not a boring chore for returning veterans. Also, the big jump down from the top floor is weirdly exciting for me. Well, I have to agree with you there, Captain. I do like that jump off the top there from the middle of the Great Deku Tree down through that web. I think when I first played this game, I was absolutely stumped, pardon the pun, to uh, get down into that hole covered by that web. But, you know, playing this game again, playing it through you with the community, you know, it's really, really good fun. And jumping down there just reminded me of playing this game the first time through when I was a kid. So it's really, really good. Well, next up, we've got Hyrule Castle. So keep wandering around Castle Town and you're going to meet Malin from Lon Lon Ranch. And she's going to explain Talon, her father, was delivering milk, but he's likely fallen asleep. Malon will then give you an egg, of course. You know, and then you want to make your way through the castle grounds, avoiding the guards as you go. You're going to find Talon asleep, the egg will hatch, and the cuckoo is going to wake him up. Talon then runs away, and you can use the crates to get into the castle, and also you have to avoid the guards as well. Well, next comment here from Fishnoot, and Fishnoot says, I need to give props to Nintendo for the use of Malon. Using a Pona song to draw the attention of the player is a great way to hint them in the path to go next. Imagine if she were just silent among the crowd of NPCs in Castle Town. So it's a really, really good point there, Fish Newt. I really do like that subtle hint. So if you do have a little bit of knowledge of the Legend of Zelda going into this game, you would recognize that Malon is the perfect person to speak to in Castle Town itself. Well, once Link gets into the castle by crawling through that little hole, we've still got loads of guards to avoid. So you want to sneak past them and you're going to find Princess Zelda. 
After chatting with the princess, she's going to explain that we need to gather the remaining spiritual stones so that we can reach the Triforce before Ganondorf does. Princess Zelda then gives you a letter, so if anyone asks who you are or why you are there, it'll prove to them that you've got the royal blessing from Princess Zelda herself. And after chatting with the princess, you leave and you're going to meet Zelda's nursemaid, Impa, and she'll teach you the first song of the ocarina, and that is Zelda's lullaby. Next comment from Fishnoot here, and Fishnoot says, Zelda's Lullaby and the Ocarina is one of the best versions, in my opinion. So it may have been introduced in A Link to the Past, but the Ocarina of Time version is the pinnacle version and I think of when the name Zelda's Lullaby pops into my head. Also, another comment here about Princess Zelda. I'll get into more detail later in the game when we meet adult Zelda, but Princess Zelda in Ocarina of Time is my favourite version of Zelda, Though Era of the Wild Zelda nowadays has started giving Ocarina of Time Zelda a run for her money. For now, young Zelda's design is okay, not a fan of the royal hood obscuring her hair, but it's not a bad design. By any means, you know, Zelda's personality is pretty direct and assertive, even for a game from the early 2000s. So the inclusion of Zelda's lullaby and all the songs in Ocarina of Time, and I know the game is literally called Ocarina of Time, but it really, really made me miss the central musical instruments to the Legend of Zelda series. So it's been a while since we've had a musical instrument in the game. I know in Breath of the Wild we had Cass. So Cass was a wandering Rito who would play a musical instrument, but I really, really miss playing a musical instrument in a Legend of Zelda game. I hope Nintendo brings that back for the future. So in terms of the comment about Zelda's detail and the design, I really like that fish newt, really appreciate the detail that you're adding to the comments, but let's get on with the story. So Impa then escorts you outside the castle and says it's time to go back to Kakariko Village. Our next objective is clear, it's Death Mountain. However, there are a few other things that we can do first. You know, a large part of Hyrule is now available to explore if you want to do so, or you, know, you can simply carry on with the main quest, but there are a few useful items that we can get, and that is where we're going to go next. So a couple of comments here from Fishnoot. So Fishnoot says, I was so secretly hoping as a kid that Zelda would be playable in the game back then. You would think that this would be fixed nowadays, but you know, even now we still wish for a playable Zelda. It's such a wasted opportunity. Also following that up with people are a lot more nasty to Link in this era. You know, many people were outright rude to Link, patronizing him as a kid and the castle guards literally throwing him out. You know, thank God you don't lose hearts from that. Otherwise, things would be much, much darker. Well, absolutely right. You would have thought by now that Nintendo would have made Zelda playable. You know, even though she did have a more active role in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, she still basically needed saving. So one day, I really hope we see a playable Zelda in a mainline Legend of Zelda game. Okay, our next destination is Death Mountain, but we can go to Kakariko Village and also the Graveyard. So you can find the three large graves, and there you're going to meet the Composer Brothers. Then they tell you about the Sun Song, which can make the sun rise when you want. So you want to find the Triforce logo, stand on it, play Zelda's lullaby, and a storm will gather, and lightning will strike and open up a secret door. Make your way down into the royal family's tombs, continue to the end, and you're going to learn the Sun Song. Also, it's worth noting, in the graveyard, if you find the grave with the flowers next to it, and you wait till night time for the kid to go away, so you can go down into that grave and you get the Hylian Shield. Okay, next community comment from Captain Bergeson. By the way, anyone else get the Sun Song before heading up Death Mountain, or is that just me? Now, I usually stop by the graveyard to nab a free Hylian Shield anyways, so I always go and get the Sun Song while I am at it. Well, Captain Bergeson, I do have a confession to make. This is the first time that I got the Hylian Shield in a playthrough of Ocarina of Time. I do remember getting the Sun Song before, that is a very, very memorable tune, and also the journey to get that is very memorable, but in terms of the Hylian Shield, that one just simply passed me by, and I think I completed the game before without ever seeing it, so saw it this time, got it, and those two items have been ticked off the list. Well, we've got another comment from Fishnoot, and Fishnoot says, this time around, I managed to avoid the Redeads to get the Sun Song, I don't know why I always used to go in front of the Redeads when going in the back of them completely avoids the pitfall of the horror scream that stuns you. And yes, to be honest, I had forgotten the terrifying Redeads. That screaming is just simply going to haunt my soul forever. 
Well, next up, let's go back to Kakariko Village. So you want to leave the graveyard and go back to Kakariko Village. And he can gather all the cuckoos to get an empty bottle. That is also really useful for storing things, especially bugs. We've got another comment here from Captain Bergerson. And Captain says it's great how much side content you can access, even this early on. All the while steering you in the right direction pretty gracefully. Though in hindsight, there is a bit of clarity missing on when and how you meet Malon. Nothing too bad. Obviously, I figured it out as a kid, but playing it here and now, I realise there's not as much to communicate to you that you have to meet her before trying to get into the castle as there could have been. Same idea goes for Nian to backtrack to the Lost Woods to learn Saria's song. So absolutely right, Captain Bergerson. I think the hints are very subtle indeed. I think Fishnew, so I think Fishnew mentioned it earlier on in the game that a Pona's song is playing very lightly as you're going around Castle Town, which is very, very interesting. To be honest, I completely miss that clue. But also regarding Saria's song, it's quite interesting because I went down to Lake Hylia later on when I was doing this kind of big gathering of songs and items and things like that. And I got a little pop-up from Navi saying, oh, well, why don't you go back to the Lost Woods and speak to Saria? So I think if you hang around in Hyrule, you get that little hint from Navi. That probably she was just wondering why I wasn't continuing with the main adventure. Well, next up, we got Lon Lon Ranch. So you want to leave the village and go back out to Hyrule Field towards Lon Lon Ranch, and that is in the middle of Hyrule Field. So make sure it's day by playing the Sun Song, then have a chat with Talon. So he's got a cuckoo game prepared for you, and you have to find them and bring them back. So you have to catch three super cuckoos, and Talon will give you a bottle, this time filled with Lon Lon milk. Then have a chat with Malon, and she's going to teach you a Pona's song. And comment here from Fishnew about getting to Lon Lon Ranch, so pea hats are the absolute worst, Thank God they didn't return in the era of the world. I can only imagine how horrifying a pea hats would be in the era of the world games. They're absolutely terrible. So they're these big flying things that kind of fly at you with this kind of spinning blade umbrella type thing. It's absolutely horrible. And also another comment from Fishnoop. Fishnoop says, I noticed Lon Lon Ranch was on a raised plateau in the game. And the ruins in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are on a flat plane. Now, what happened to the plateau that gave the protective walls on all sides of the ranch? Good little mystery there from Fishnoot. But next up, let's go on to Lake Hylia. So this one's a good chance to go down to Lake Hylia and check out the fishing mini game. So to get there, you need to make your way through Gerudo Valley and jump into the river. And that will take you to Lake Hylia. But before we go fishing, we've got some scarecrows. And one of them says they can remember any song. So you can play something with eight notes and they remember that for later on. Now then, swim over to the island, go through the door, and you can try out the fishing game for 20 rupees. Well, next up, we're going to go back to the forest, and we've got the sacred forest meadow. So, we're going to go back and have a chat with Saria. To do this, we have to navigate the lost woods. The path through the woods is right, left, right, left, forward, left, right. And then, on our way, we can also upgrade our Deku Seeds pouch to hold even more ammo than before. You want to make your way through to the meadow to meet Saria once again. She'll play her song, and that allows us to talk to Saria remotely. Okay, I've got a comment from Fishnoot here, and Fishnoot says, I never realised how ingrained my own tips are for myself in my head. Traversing the Lost Woods is made a lot easier when you're not using Saria's song, due to the fact that in the adult future, the song no longer pitches down when you go the wrong way. Something I learned watching DB Geek trying to use the song to guide him and finding it no longer help because the volume is at a constant as an adult. So my method is much more foolproof. You know, when looking into the different log pathways, you subtly notice there are hints of light in some paths. Paths that have light at the end of the tunnel mean they take link to another area. That's either Kokori Forest if you go the wrong way, or one that leads into the Sacred Meadow if you choose all the right paths. The paths that are pitch black mean they lead to another part of the Lost Woods for you to travel down. Thus, if you want to avoid going back to the beginning, you can only avoid it by taking the pitch black paths. Fishnoot, you're an absolute genius. I really, really love that and the way that you figure that out. Thank you very much for that. But from this point, it is time to return to Kakariko Village and make our way to Death Mountain. But that is where we're going to stop part one and we're going to continue in part two. Final comment here from Fishnoot, and Fishnoot says, So after Era of the Wild's Link's personality is showing in the text boxes, I started noticing more of Ocarina of Time's Link's own personality through the texts. 
The sheer fact he has the option to say no in a lot of cases now gives me the belief that Link is not as altruistic in Ocarina of Time as we'd think. Now, I picture him hesitating to say yes and even saying no, only to be persuaded to doing things anyway. The fact Link does not emote much is unfortunate, but I learned to appreciate the ability to be a petulant twerp when the mood suited me. Such as telling Zelda no when she asked me if I'm from the forest or when she asked me to keep it a secret. Even then, I said no to the great Deku tree and he gently brooked no argument from me and just told me the story of the Triforce anyway. And that tells me he gets this sort of thing from the Kokori or Link often. Well, really, really good comment there to end Fishnoot. Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, really appreciate all of your comments. Fishnoot, Captain Bergson, it's been a fantastic part one and I hope to see you for part two. But that is it for Ocarina of Time and the Zelda Game Club Part 1. But if you want to get involved, it is not too late. Get your comments to me on this video by Sunday the 15th of October to have your comments included in Part 2. And you want to play up until you get to the Forest Temple and then you want to stop. But if you want to join in with Fish Newt and Captain Bergson and get your comments read out on Part 2 of the Ocarina of Time Zelda Game Club, well, get your comments on this video by Sunday the 15th of October and I would really, really appreciate your contributions. But thank you to everyone who has written in so far. I love playing through Ocarina of Time and knowing that there's people out there enjoying it at the same time is really, really, really good. Well, that is it for this episode of the Zelda Game Club. Thank you for watching or for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you very, very soon.